When I was younger, most of the heroes I had and people I looked up to were on the radio or TV and on big stages singing for thousands of people. And into my 20s and early 30s, I spent a lot of my life wanting a life like theirs. As I've gotten older, my priorities and the things that are important to me have completely changed. The people I find myself looking up to now are a little different than the ones when I was young. They tend to be hardworking, strong characters who know who they are and what truly matters most in life and spend their lives championing those values. Talk later. Okay. Love you. Bye. With the coronavirus all over the news and so many uncertainties out there about the future, it's hard not to start thinking about where our food is coming from and what would happen if we were to suddenly run out. Not just in our fridges, but everywhere. At a time like this, a lot of things that we have all just taken for granted all these years have started to become hard to find things like meat and bread and eggs. No eggs. We'll meet you at the coffee shop in about 15 minutes. And this is not just affecting me and my family. It is also impacting our friends and community and the whole world right now. <laughs> How are you guys? I ain't worried. Luckily, we have a number of local farms nearby who are less dependent on grocery stores and others to supply their food. So my buddies Chris and Matt and I took a ride out to see one of them. Kevin Krause and his wife Mickey have 65 acres just outside of town. They are quick to tell you that they haven't always been farmers. He retired from the Air Force a half dozen years ago after learning about a farmer named Joel Salatin and his unusual growing methods they decided to buy some land and make a go of it as homesteaders. Not just growing their own food, but also working to supply others in the community with some homegrown fresh options too. Good, no, we've had a little bit more business this week that we sell at the Columbia Health Store. So yeah. they were out of everything. We had grain in there yesterday with a big load of stuff and uh, we've had a lot of customers coming out and looking for food to stock up. So. I do think it's yeah. reminded people that if you have a local supplier of something that that's important, yeah, you know, absolutely. that it, it's yeah. um, just kind of a wake up call to all of us, I guess. Yeah. But. Part of the reason we moved out here, we had in the back of our mind, uh, you never know what can happen in the world. And if you're at least growing some of your own food, you won't go hungry. So that was part of our logic. And, you know, right. we never, we're not doomsdayers or anything like that, but we, we do appreciate the fact that that is working for us. We've sure. it's working. pretty self-sustaining out here. <laughs> You're winning right now. <laughs> On most Saturday mornings in the summer, Indy and I make the trek to our local farmer's market, and that's where we first met Kevin and his wife. We typically do a couple batches a year. That, that ten ten or so. ten weeks? Or eight weeks. Eight weeks. Mm -hmm. We'll have them in the chicken tractors for about five weeks, and then I'll take them to process them. I just load them in the back of the stock trailer, and I haul them up to a place in Kentucky. We cross it before. What are the different breeds you have here? So these could be any of these breeds, right? They'll be a mix of breeds, you betcha. What are the breeds? Uh, we've got some Bart Rocks, we've got some Cinnamon Queens, we've got some Golden Comets, we've got some Rhode Island Reds. The rooster themselves were hatched here on this farm, so they're already okay. a mix of, of breed. That's your babies I'm going to take home, Mom. <laughs> that okay? <laughs>
You're welcome, Rory. Thanks for coming out to visit us today. Great to have you. We'll see you again. You're welcome anytime. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate y'all coming out. Thinking about all the uncertainty in the air and spending a little time at Kevin's farm today, I can't help but think about the trip we took this past fall to the National Homesteaders of America Conference in Virginia. It's an event that Joey and I had heard about and always wanted to go to, so getting the chance to come this year and bring Indy and some friends was really special for me. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, welcome to Homesteaders of America. Thank you. We're glad to be here. I'm Amy Fuel, the founder of Homesteaders of America. We started the organization back in 2016, and our first conference was in 2017. Um, the first year we were expecting like 300 people and we had 1,500. <laughs> a lot of people come to the event saying it's like a big family reunion every year because you get to network with people online and then you actually get to meet those people every year at the conference. And so here we try to have speakers and lecturers that can show you demonstrations like Joel Salatin, he's doing a, a meat bird demonstration today. So we talk about all things homesteading, gardening, chicken keeping, hogs. What do you guys do exactly? We teach people how to uh, humanely slaughter and butcher and cure pigs at their homes. So we teach them how to make dry cured hams and bacon and sausage and all the good stuff. Scripted, it would have been a complete train wreck. That feels pretty good. In 2014, just before Indiana was born, my wife and I had made plans to take the year off from music and stay home and homestead, to try to simplify our lives and plant deeper roots in the soil of our farm and community. Like our neighbor Kevin, one of Joey's and my biggest inspirations and heroes is a farmer named Joel Salatin. We came across his story and farm early in our marriage and have read most of his books and watched lots of his how-to videos on YouTube over the years. Even the rough chicken shelters we made and used were exact replicas of the ones Joel uses on his farm. He's going to be put in action for today. Joey had always hoped to one day cross paths and get to meet Joel. And though it never happened, a year or two ago out of the blue, I got an email from him, and since then, we have become good friends. This past October, he was the one who invited us to the Homesteaders event where he was the keynote speaker. Afterwards, we went back to his farm and spent the night and the next day yep. together. I've got some buddies here from okay. back home. This is Gabe McCauley. Hello. Hi, Gabe. Good nice to meet you. you. And I'm Theron Joel. Hutton. Hey, Joel. Hi, Theron. Nice to meet you. Like me, they have farms and um, they grow gardens. They have some chickens. Chickens. Mm -hmm. uh, you have cows at your place? Uh, we've got a few cows. A few cows? And we've done some pigs in the past. 
Uh-huh. Uh, got a few animals. But we're all kind of just wanting to learn a little bit more about how to uh -huh. do things better, so we'd love to have a tour. Yeah, I've got a tractor and some hay on a wagon. We can kind of flop down, take a nap as we go from stop to stop. Mm, okay. Perfect, let's go. <laughs> When the industry shows a picture of confinement hog houses, look how much pork we're raising in this little footprint. They don't show the square miles of grain to come in and the square miles of effluent pumping out. Here, you're seeing it all. That Sunday morning after breakfast, Joel and his wife Teresa invited us to come to church with them. It just happened to be on a day when they had Joel scheduled to be their guest speaker. We met lots of nice folks, and I got up and sang a song, but I think Indy's favorite part was playing hide-and-seek with her papa. If you're focused on your problems... In my opinion, Joel was born to be a preacher, but not just in a normal church. Although his faith in God is very strong and a huge part of his life, Joel's pulpit is in the pasture, and what he preaches about is the creatures and the life that comes from it. His congregation is all over the world. He speaks at hundreds of events to thousands of people who are hanging on every word he shares. And his new methods of farming, whether it's free-range chicken, salad bar beef, or piggeraters, can be challenging to folks who've done things a certain way for a long time. For farming to be sustainable in the future, we need to have younger people getting involved staying on the farms, or choosing to move to or start one. And Joel has inspired a whole new generation of farmers and wannabe farmers all over the globe. The food system, the health system, the, the soil system, the water system. I mean, we have a lot of broken things on the planet right now. I mean, all of the trajectories are heading south. There's a Chinese proverb that says, if you keep going the way you're going, you're gonna end up where you're headed. We're now birthing the first generation that is not expected to live as long as its parents. That's alarming. Uh, and, and the food is, is, um, is almost toxic in a lot of ways, not to mention that we have uh, a, a lot of pollution created by factory farms, um, pollution created by chemicals. A lot needs to be fixed. And so our mission here is to show a credible alternative to the current chemical industrial-based orthodoxy to a, uh, you know, a, a, a rat race of sickness and offer an abundance and a wellness, a wellness ecologically, physically, economically. Um, and, and that includes sacred work that, that, that is noble, uh, that's not just you know, putting in my time till I die, but actually creating righteous legacy vocations that are uh, th that are life affirming on a personal and a you know and a community and a, and a cultural level. So, um, yeah, we're on a mission. Whatever the platform we get to uh, to speak and 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 inspire and encourage and challenge as necessary to uh, change the world. Um, I'm on board. I mean, just yesterday, I was at the Homesteaders of America conference. There were, what, 2,500 people there. It's very similar to the early homeschoolers of 35 years ago that, uh, that said, you know, enough. Uh, the orthodoxy doesn't work, and we're going to go a different direction. Imagine, imagine the person um, 600 years, 700 years ago that dared to say, the earth is not flat, it's round. That was a weird person, uh, uh, you know, uh, that was a weird person. What we're seeing is, is more and more people are having an aha moment, waking up to that. You mean I can't just trust the establishment? No, you can't just trust the establishment. And, uh, and when a person makes that, that, decision, that aha moment, everything in life changes. They start looking for different places to invest, different things to eat, different things to recreate for, different ways to educate their kids different ways to interact with their community. Everything changes. This is the unfolding story of the life we are building together 
as I try to make a difference and live each day like it's my last. That Sunday evening, just as the sun started setting, friends and neighbors from all around showed up to a big dinner spread that Joel and his team put together. After dinner, in one of the hoop houses there on the farm where they had brought in some hay bales, a little sound system, and even hung a chandelier, I shared a few songs and Joel shared the story of how we met. The way this thing uh, developed, just so everybody gets a little bit of the backstory, um, maybe a year ago, one of our very loyal, wonderful customers, Claire, said, have you ever heard of a guy named Rory Feek? And uh, looked him up and said, boy, he's, he's really good. Um, and, and Claire told us, yeah, he's written this book, and, and, and Polyface is in this book. So the next thing I knew, uh, Wendy brought in an autographed copy of the book, gave it to me. I opened the book at one o'clock. I didn't put it down till five, read straight through it, burned through it and wet, the, the, the desk was wet with tears. Just powerful, profound, and wonderful. And I just said, you know, this guy has heart, and I need to pursue this relationship. That's how this developed, and um, so you are a part of that, and thank you for being our friends, our community, our neighbors, and for showing this level of support to, um, to Rory's heart and effort. In, in this uh, in this evening. So, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Rory and let him. As the evening came to a close, I couldn't help but think of how much Joy would have loved being there, to meet Joel and spend time with his family and neighbors, and also make memories that will last forever. It is such a blessing to have our garden and farm experience with Joey through all the years to build upon, and the opportunity to meet and learn from others like Joel, especially in a time like this. Indiana, come here, I want to show you something. Come here. Look what I got. What do you think we should do with these? Um, baby chips. Should we make some baby chips? Yes. You want to help me? Yes. Okay, let's go. Okay. I just got it all there. Can you sit down here, buddy? You ready? Here's what we're going to do. The first thing we have to do is we have to write little X's on here. Okay. Watch Papa. I'll do it myself. See, Papa can do an X. Ranger, who you look into? We'll write an X on there. Let me see you do. That's great. One, two, three, four, five. Twelve. Twelve eggs. Mm-hmm. You know what these are going to be? What? They're going to be baby chicks. And then when these baby chicks grow up, guess what they'll be? They'll be mama hens, and they'll lay eggs for us, and then we'll have lots of eggs. Won't that be nice? Yeah. Let's look at these together. This is just like a mama hen, and she's moving her baby eggs around. I love to dance. Oh, you're going to dance. All right, I'm gonna go start dinner, okay? You did a good job, Andy Boone. Give me smooch. <laughs>